Well, that's just a positioning statement, the voice of Indiana County. I know the guy that's the true voice of Indiana County. He's Tom Stutzman, Emergency Management Director. Our conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. Tom, good morning. Good morning. Good to have you with us here today. So this has been in the news the last couple of days. 911 breakdowns affecting 13 counties. Um, first of all, any effect at all for Indiana County. And then when I want to talk about the system and, and the redundancy that is built in so that uh, if a system does go down, uh, we're not left out in the cold. Yes. Um, the, the, the outage, you know, is, is advertised or as is is, is it's been portrayed as a 911 outage was actually more than that because it, it truly was telephone system outages in, in various exchanges in those counties. So it, it was the inability of, of people to call anywhere, not just to 911, that was truly the impact on this outage. Wow. And and that makes it even more, I guess, more dangerous for people wanting to contact each other in health situations, uh, but certainly Sir, from a 911 standpoint. Oh, yes. Um, the inability for somebody to have that instant access to, to dialing 911, um, you know, obviously could be devastating. Um, they, you know, th- th- it was spread... And that's that's the odd part. It was spread throughout various counties in the state, um, and and the points of of uh, accidental losses, as far as system disconnects, were in other states as well as some here in Pennsylvania. Oh, so yeah. the, it was a network outage that caused that to occur. Now CenturyLink slash Lumen, uh, those two companies' combined efforts, uh, those are the ones uh, who had suffered the outage. Now, Indiana County does use CenturyLink. I don't know if it's CenturyLink slash Lumen, but you do. Um, yes, we do. How, uh, so you're on that same system. How do you think Indiana County was able to avoid it? Well, it, you know, we're on that system, but, you know, the telephone network that backhauls that system here locally is still a Verizon telephone network. So it, it, it really was sporadic in that it, it didn't impact Verizon or what we referred to as some of the old general telephone networks that were out there. It seemed to be related to other telephone provider areas, so, you know, such as Windstream or, or types of uh, these other frontier companies. I'm not exactly sure which one it was that, that had the mo- major impact, but the CenturyLink Lumen network rides over those other networks. Oh, I see. I see. Well, and certainly as Indiana County's emergency management director, you're watching this with great interest and uh, and and more than just a little bit of interest. Uh, you want to be involved in uh, helping to, to break down what happened and whether their redundancies worked. Let's talk about how Indiana County uh, has uh, put measures in place, especially in these last five years, uh, to to make sure that if the system does go down, uh, the calls will be switched to other counties, and 911 services will still be available. Yes. Uh, in, in the 911 switching equipment, we have built in redundancy with our partner counties in, in Region 13 through a project we've called WestCore. Um, and we're continuing with that project to do next-generation 911, which would allow for the use of a lot of the wireless technology for sharing information with the 911 telecommunicators. Um, the redundancy that we've established within the region would support the 911 systems themselves and the ability for the caller to be directed should we lose our building um, or, or lose our network connectivity. Um, unfortunately, in this case, with what occurred in, in this outage, because it was a telephone system outage and it was directly impacting the customer's ability to make phone calls, what we put in place would not override that. Yeah, well, and that makes it really interesting. You can build as much into a system as as you possibly can or can afford, uh, and still uh, there is a point at which it's it's just too far beyond the capabilities. And and I know nobody wants to see something like that ever happen. That's that's correct. You know, we we have tried to look at numerous redundancies in the system. Um, from top to bottom. I mean, we, we even maintain the capability that we can isolate ourselves from the network and still continue to provide 911 service. Um, and it, you just can't plan for a local, a local exchange outage such as this that was tied to a carrier service. Uh, you know, with, with our new technology globally, 
a lot of what we relied on in the past is the local central switching office for the phone company has all been computerized and is tied to a much larger network that is now hundreds if not thousands of miles away. And that severing of the connection between those two points can cause this type of an outage. Yeah, one of the interesting things to me about this or any real issue involving technology is a lot of times the platform on which we place it all is is ancient and uh, and and it needs to be upgraded and shored up as well. And uh, well, I know that Indiana County is working hard on issues such as that. And uh, in August, as a matter, I think it was in August uh, when you took another step forward uh, in in trying to. Uh, make a system as fail-safe as is possible. It's never going to be completely fail-safe. How are the upgrades going right now, and um, and uh, have the latest round of of upgrades begun? Yes, we are well underway with the with the next gen nine one one upgrades, um, and that actually comes in two parts. There's a piece of it that that each of the counties is working on internally, and and regionally. And then there's a separate piece that the state is working on through the Pima 911 office to to bring all of that to fruition. And a lot of it is driven by upgrading of map data, um, making sure that we have contiguous addressing across county boundaries, um, installing the technology within each of the centers to make sure that we can process the calls as they come in. Um, we have been slowed somewhat by COVID. Um, with the limited access that we all have in allowing large groups of people to come in and work in our buildings. You know, our building here in Indiana County has been closed to any outside people other than our staff since last March. Mm -hmm. Um, We've obviously had to allow um, technicians in to maintain and and repair things, but we've done that on a limited basis. And in a full-scale um, replacement of our 911 switching equipment requires more than that single technician. Yeah, yeah. So that, that you know, you do what you can within the strictures that you have put in place by the pandemic or by other factors. One of the things and issues with Indiana County 911 has been uh, broadband availability, uh, the ability to make a cell phone call, for instance. Blue Spruce Park has been held up as one area where uh, as an example, uh, you can go and uh, lose your cell phone coverage, but uh, there are many areas of Indiana County that don't have cell phone coverage. And I know the county's working so very hard uh, to try to find a way to make it so that 911 service is available no matter where you happen to be, from the remotest output in the woods to, to right in the middle of a town. Yes, uh, the commissioner's office, along with the county planning office and our office, have all been diligently working on any solution that we can find that would improve that high-speed broadband uh, capability. Um, the, the confusion that a lot a lot of folks would have in that is is broadband and cell phone coverage are two completely separate things, yeah. and we're, we're but we're working on both problems. Um, you know, AT and T, which is one of our local cell phone carriers, is is doing some expansion um, within the county. You know, we're constantly pushing Verizon Wireless to do that, but also the use of of Wi-Fi hotspots that would be publicly accessible is something that that we're also working on. Um, you know, folks that use Wi-Fi cell phone connectivity mostly do that on a closed network in their home or or in a family environment. Um, we're trying to expand that, and we've done some work, and there's work that's continuing today. Um, I know that Byron Stauffer in the planning office has has a plan um, that that really is pushing out as as best we can to get coverage countywide. When you hear of something that is working in another county or even in another state, uh, and and you look at Indiana County's situation and compare it to them, um, make you pretty excited when you see that, hey, here's something new that maybe someday in the future we could bring to Indiana County uh, and improve services even more. We know that technology is improving all the time, and, and as I said before, we have to get those foundations built underneath them, but uh, there are some just some, some very exciting things coming out. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of the uh, one of the things that you know we've seen a lot of advertising about the FirstNet network, mm-hmm. the federally funded program that that is FirstNet. Um, you know they're they're showing this ability for first responders to communicate from their cell phones and from laptops and tablets and things like that. 
and that's that's fantastic. Um, we're we're looking at the ability to use that technology for a mobile data platform countywide, and we've started down that road and and have used the county sheriff's department as our test model to install equipment and see how well it covers. And, and that becomes the big issue. It all looks good in a TV ad, but is the coverage in place that allows it to work in rural Pennsylvania? So we're, we're working in that direction, and we're very hopeful. And I, I think as long as we keep working that way, that we'll get support from FirstNet and from AT&T, which is their parent company, um, to expand that footprint to guarantee that we have the coverage. But, again, it's another one of those systems that can work on that Wi-Fi network for mm-hmm. connectivity if we have that in place as well. Yeah, And I know that there have been times where Indiana County firefighting teams have not even been able to communicate with each other over radio, and that has been an issue for a long time in Indiana County. I would assume this would, uh, would actually help in that respect, too. Well, actually, we solved that problem about 10 years ago. There's really very, very little um, space in Indiana County where a fireman on a portable can't push and talk. Um, the, the thing we're working on with that system is getting the interoperability across county lines into some of our adjoining counties. It works well with us with, with Westmoreland and Armstrong and shortly with Cambria, and now we're working on Jefferson and Clearfield to have that interoperability um, between our, our countywide system and their county systems. There are a lot of issues to be covered when you're talking about 911 emergency services as a whole. And, well, you're, you're right there at the front of it uh, helping to fight those battles and try to find those solutions. Tom Stutzman, I want to thank you so much for making the time to be with us today. We appreciate it. Oh, anytime, Todd. Have a great day today. You too. Thank you. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160 AM. 11.6 to AM.